I'm Bill Van Gilder. Today I want to show you how I make this textured storage jar. It's made from three pounds of clay and this clay right now I'm using Red Rock which is a cone six firing clay which you can get from High Water Ceramic Supply Center in North Carolina near Asheville. The texture on the pot is done with a rather curious tool which we can make ourselves. It's made from a credit card, an old one, don't use your current one by the way. And this card, we start with a fresh one and I found these serrated scissors or pinking shears, I guess they're called, at a flea market and I grabbed them. So I'm just going to cut the piece of that off. This serrated edge becomes the tool we use to put the texture on the pot. But it's not done when the pot's round, it's done when the pot is in a cylinder form. And I'll show you that. We're also going to make a lid for this pot. And I'll show you how I measure it and how I form the gallery. There are lots of different ways to do this process. I'll just show you the way I do it. To make this project, you're going to need a ruler to take the measurement at the top of the jar. You're going to need a small sponge of some sort and some water. Now I'm going to use a serrated or wiggled wire to put a linear pattern on the bottom of the pot too. And I'll show you that when we come to finish this pot. I'll use a small rib to get this roundness up here, right, right at the neck. I use an undercutting tool to create a bevel down here and to create these lines here and here. So let's go to the wheel and let me show you what I do. First thing I'm going to do is attach it back to the wheel head and I'm going to use pins and a great bat and this, this bat is a, a hydro bat and you can get them from um, continental clay. Slightly dampen the bat. Dry it off. You don't want this to be too shiny. Round off the piece of clay. So I have a good dome surface here to make a solid attachment without trapping air. And get this centered. Get it opened and get it pulled up into a straight cylinder. Now I'm opening about four inches inside here using three pounds of clay. The lid is made with 12 ounces of clay. Now because I'm going to operate from a cylinder to decorate the form. I want to leave the wall a little bit thicker than normal, a little bit thicker than a quarter of an inch, because I'm going to stretch this wall outward and I don't want it to crack as I go through that process. Leave a rather healthy rim up here. And use a rib to smooth the edge at the top and up the wall of the pot. Now I want this surface as smooth as possible so the horizontal lines of throwing don't interrupt the vertical lines when I come to put the texture onto it. Now before I go much further I'm going to get the water out of the inside of this cylinder. Straighten it back up. Okay, now comes the fun part. I'm going to use a serrated edge 
and I'm going to go at the wall of this with this tool kind of aggressively with a sense of rhythm. I'm trying to overlap all the corrugations from one scratch to the other. Okay, now I'm going to wet the inside wall only by squeezing a little bit of water down on that inside surface. With the broad part, part of my fingertip here, I'm going to start pushing out down here. Oh wait, one thing. I'm going to clear this area down here. Take the texture away because it's underneath the pot. And I don't really need it to be textured down there. A little bit more water. Speed the wheel up, and what I'm going to do is watch this profile change as I use the broad part of my fingertips to push it outward. You don't have to take it all out at once. You can do it in small increments. Control the rim. And I'm going to smooth that off. Go back in and do it again. Do it slowly. One doesn't have to hurry over this process. You'll be surprised how far you can push this thing into a circle, into a round globe. Again, take the water out of the inside. I don't want the base of this pot inside to get mushy. Push this in a little bit. When I make lid fittings for a jar, any kind of jar, any kind of casserole, I do it in half inch increments. Three inch, three and a half, four, four and a half. It's just easier to deal with. So I'm gonna take my first measurement here. And I'm just a little bit less than three inches, three and a half inches rather, and that's okay. I'm going to push it out just a little bit more up here. I'm going to take the tip of this sharp tool, this undercutting rib, put a line here. And I'm, I'm not sticking the tool in straight. I'm putting it on a flat angle. So I get a nice, nice soft mark. I'll double this one up down here. Push this out a little bit. I want to show you something. If you use the tip of your finger only when you push this pot out, you'll get these horizontal lines, which I don't really care for because they interrupt the visual vertical line. So sometimes we can do away with them a little bit. But I think that one's there to stay. I'm going to use this rib to finish up this neck area kind of neatly. Clean up the rim, a slight softening of the grooves I cut, and a final measurement. Now if the inside is three and a half, the outside is going to be about four and a half because this rim is a quarter of an inch thick on each side, so that takes three and a half open plus a half inch, there's four and I want the lid to hang over at least a quarter of an inch on either side. So that means four and a half out here, three and a half in here. And that information I'll need when I come to throw the lid, which is next. I'm gonna use this wiggle wire, pull it underneath my pot, clean the bat off, and set this aside to dry.
the lid for that pot that I just made, I'm going to use a 12 ounce piece of clay. Again, dome it smooth so we've got a good attachment to the wheel head. Center that clay quite small underneath. Nine times out of ten, we all use too much clay when we're making lids. So by putting this area or keeping this area small under here, it means you can use less clay per lid. I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to capture the clay between my finger underneath and my thumb on top here and here. Put a finger on the rim and a finger in here. So what I've got is a really thick sloping edge to this little bowl at this point. Now I'm going to make a line with my fingernail right here and that's my first measurement. And it's just perfect. It's three and a half inches. The way I do these lids, I hold inside here with my fingertips. I turn my first finger over and I put my second finger underneath. And I push down on my first finger. That creates this little gallery. By pushing down, this rises up. You can sometimes squeeze it a bit. You want to pull this out a little bit here and widen this flat flange area, but make sure the rim stays kind of chunky at this point. We can trim it away to be thinner later if we need to. Now this little neck right here only has to be tall enough to get inside the jar opening and catch there. It doesn't have to be half an inch tall. That's excess clay, which is excess weight. So we're going to clean it up with a sponge. I usually put this swirl on the inside, which I'll show you in a second. And one final measurement. Three and a half. It's a little over. Four and a half. But that's okay. I'm going to use a wiggle wire on the top here. On the other side of that lid. Dry fingertips. Pop it up. Keep my fingers away from that textured pattern underneath and you can see the swirl that I put in the inside. I'm going to set this aside and let it set up until it's leather hard when we'll trim it, put a knob on it, and finish the jar lid. The next step is to trim our lids and to trim the pot. So the first thing I'm going to do to get this pot onto the wheel head is put a pad of clay down. For me it works a lot better than trying to put a couple pieces or three pieces of clay to hold it in place. You'll see what I mean here. I'm just going to smooth this as flat as I can and then clean it off to dry it. I don't want this to be wet. Something that's a, sometimes helpful is if one puts a few marks on it to help you center the piece that's going to be attached. I'm just going to tap it in place and then tap it in place very lightly. This is fairly stiff. Now what am I going to do here? I'm going to take a little bit of this edge off here And I trim with the wheel moving pretty quickly. I also use the very broad part of this tool rather than the tip. Now, something about these tools which I like a lot, you can burnish with them. Right now this clay has a lot of tear lines in it from the small pieces of sand that are in the clay. But if one takes this tool, does your, you do your trimming, and then tip it upward, you'll suddenly burnish that surface and get rid of all those lines which can cause pinholing. I'm going to put a little line right there with my fingernail and I'm going to slope this downward. Now that texture in the center, I tend to frame it out a little bit with my 
fingernail and then soften those edges. Okay, we'll set this aside and do the lid. Now before I attach the lid to this pad, I'm going to pull a keyhole right here. And what is a keyhole? It means I can get my finger up underneath the lid rim and pop it up from the pad without damaging the rest of the lid. If I put a knob here, I can't grab it by the knob. That's too soft. So we'll center this up and push a little force on it. Push downward. And again, as I trimmed on the, the lid, I use a lot of this blade at one time. I'm going to cut back right here. There's a lot of lines at the top of the neck of the jar, and I want them to relate to these lines right here. Hopefully I'll put a glaze on there that will pool in those, those little lines and make them show up quite dynamically. Okay, dampen that and add this quite soft piece of clay. Now this was a pot that got destroyed somewhere along the making uh, cycle and I just scrunched it up, wrapped it in plastic and it's extra soft clay. And this is the best kind of clay for me to use for a knob because it means I don't have to force it too much on top of the lid as I attach it. But I am going to smooth it. I don't want any divots in there to catch between the lid and the knob clay. A little bit of water. Now I can make a really standard knob, something quite easy, but I think this jar is kind of demands something a little weird, so I'm going to do it a little loose. And I want another series of lines right here to tie into these lines. If you can't use your fingernail, which I often do, I'll use this tool. Slight softening with a sponge. I don't want any of these lines to be sharp. I kind of like it as a storage jar. There's no right way or wrong way to make pots. There's just different ways. And this is the way I do it. Thanks for watching YouTube.